Hello, everybody. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Lunch on Tuesdays. I'm Kayleen McCabe, contractor um, and advocate for education, joined as usual by Scott Sheilar with Sefka. How are you doing this week, Scott? I am doing great, Kayleen. Had a wonderful weekend and just uh, back at it this week and excited to talk to you about Skills USA. How fun is this? Oh my gosh. I all week I'm like, I'm not going to fangirl out too much. I kind of tried to contain it a bit, but I am definitely excited today for today's guest. And um, I've been a, you know, we're both big fans of Skills USA. Now, did you ever, were you a member? I was not a member, but I've been involved with Skills USA longer than I've been involved with SEFCA, which is saying something. I've been with SEFCA for 22 years. Um, but I started with Skills USA back when it was called VICA. Do you remember those days? Yes, yes, I do. We had that at our school. Um, I wanted to build popsicle structures and they didn't have a class that would teach that. But yes, it's a, an organization that's been around for a long time. Um, I was unaware on how long, but I was not a member either, but I'm such a giant fan. And it's interesting you meet other folks who like, well, I should go back to school so I can become a, an actual member. Yeah, and that's I, my idea. I agree. I want one of those red jackets. Do you have one of the red jackets yet? No, um, I don't. I don't. I have um, a, a red jacket from World Skills, but not the authentic red jacket. And that's, I want to earn it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, you have to. So, but yeah, I started with Vicka back in the late nineties. I used to run the carpentry competition, believe it or not, for, for Vicka. Uh, it, it was Vicka. And then I think uh, Skills USA Vicka, and then it just became Skills USA. But yeah, I ran the carpentry contest when I worked for the Associated General Contractors. We would run the carpentry contest for the state here in Georgia. And, um, you know, and then the big thing for me was when I finally got to go out to nationals in Kansas City when it was there. And I just remember everybody saying, you have to see nationals, you have to see. And finally, I, I, I surrendered. I said, okay, I'm going to see nationals. And it was something I'll never forget. I, I get chills thinking about it now, you know, riding up the escalators and seeing that big floor uh, covered with competitions. And, and it's what inspired us to come back to Georgia and create our event here. You know, the big uh, Expo and Skills USA event we do in Georgia. It was seeing that national competition in, I believe it was around 2000, the year 2000 when I first saw it. Um, and it just inspired me. And I came back to Georgia and, uh, you know, all our friends and we, we put together, you know, a big event. It's not quite nationals big, but it's, but it's big. So and it's fun. It is. Uh, Scott, I've had the fortunate opportunity to attend quite a few state competitions. Uh, Georgia is one of the largest that I've been to. And it's kind of, it's fun for you folks too, because your state competition will now also be housed in the same facility where nationals will be at. And so it is that large of a competition. It's by no means small. It's gigantic. I mean, I'm, it's, it's awesome. And yeah. I understand that, that chill, the feeling that comes over talking about the first time you experienced nationals. And it was very similar to me, too. Um, I had heard about it over and over again. And um, sometimes people with TV shows want, like, an entourage and, like, want to know. I'm more, like, fly under the radar because I wanted to see what was really going on. I wanted to experience like authentically. So I flew myself out there and I remember walking in and it was students everywhere. Now I was a nerd in, in school. So I did a lot of leadership um, camps and classes. And I was like, oh, this looks so much fun. They were all hanging out, having a great time. And then I had a group of students come up to me and they said, hey, do you have any pins to trade? And I'm like, what are you speaking of? And the pin situation is this beautiful opportunity to have kind of a first business card. You're starting an exchange with a conversation with a stranger. You're negotiating sometimes. It's a wonderful experience. And I was like, no, I don't. And, and they're like, well, what do you do? And now at this point, I had become so accustomed to every time I would tell people that I was a carpenter, I'd get a look up and down like, you're a carpenter. All right. So I told these students, you know, I'm a carpenter. I do framing. And instead of getting a look up and down, they're like, oh, I'm an HVAC, I'm an automotive. I had found my people, Scott, it was, I fell in love instant. If you talk about love at first sight, that was it. Speaking of pins, my tool this week to geek out yeah, on. We almost forgot. It's not even a tool. I'm bragging about my pin collection from Skills USA. Look this is only that. a portion of it. 
I have it chronologically, alphabetically with all the states. And I haven't had the time to go on last year's yet. Because usually that's like how I prep for national. Um, that is so cool, That is such a treasure. That is so, that is so awesome. It's a, it's a thing with pride because I got those pins talking to students, mm -hmm. talking to future people I might work with. And in fact, I have a tradition where I have students sign my shoes. In fact, I collect their autographs. Like, oh, SkillsUSA Alabama gave me the megaphone. I love it. I, I use this around the house. <laughs> Not very nice all the time. But I, their autographs are on there. Because Definitely. I think that the things that skills USA provides for students are going to make such strong leaders that they're going to be famous. And someday I'm going to make money off the selling autograph. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember when you came to Georgia and you forgot to bring your red Converse to have them signed. And I had to, I went out around the city and found you a pair of red Converse to get them signed. So I know your little uh, history there with the red shoes and getting them signed. I remember that. Yeah, it's important because these students are doing amazing things. It blows my mind on, you know, having a TV show with cameras watching you work is intense and stressful. But you look at these students and the level of competition that they're able to do while being surrounded by a lot of people doing this live competing. Oh, so much respect. So I am, again, and in fact, I think Shelly's on here. Did she join us? I think so. I think so. Brand new director of Skills USA Nationals. I'm so happy that we have Shelly today. Yes, I am beyond thrilled too because yes, as the new executive director, yay, we get to fangirl out for a minute. Hi, <laughs> Shelly. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and Scott, thank you again for hanging out this Absolutely. this morning or this afternoon for lunch. And yes, yeah, so folks, if you have any questions for Sepka, please feel free to type them in and we'll get those answered for you. So Perfect. Scott, I'll see you later. Thank you, Kayleen. We'll see you in two weeks, right? Correct. Yes, we are taking next week off. Yeah. And so August 18th, we will be back for lunch. So Sounds good. Well, have a great day. Have a great day. And Shelly, thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Scott. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Hi, Shelly. How is it going? Hey, Kayleen. It's going great. Wonderful to see you again. It's been forever. I know. I know, it feels like a time warp. And um, this is such a huge treat for me because I actually have met you at multiple Skills USA events, but I haven't had a chance to hang out with you since you've become the executive director of Skills USA. So first, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. It's um, my pleasure. Yes, and uh, you kind of inherited a, in an awesome organization in sort of a challenging time. And while that's a, a bummer, you know, a lot of things have to get canceled, I appreciate the fact that you're joining us today because a lot of our fans now get to meet and hang out with us where they probably wouldn't have the opportunity before. So again, um, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, this challenging time has definitely given us very unique opportunities to actually reach even more people than ever before. So uh, thank you uh, for having me today. Yes, oh, that's good. In fact, we're going to talk about a lot of different yeah. things. But first, let's rewind a little bit because you come out of education and you've been in um, the education side of business for a long time. So from your perspective, what needs to be done to get students interested and involved in the trades? So Kayleen, I think right now is our time. And during this moment in time, what my hope is, is that we can make significant progress and actually elevating skilled trades and career and technical education right now. And I think SkillsUSA is in a very unique position to do that. Our students, as you very well know, um, their skills have always um, been es essential. But I think the pandemic has really put a spotlight on the essential nature of our plumbers, our HVAC technicians, our automotive technicians, our carpenters, more than ever uh, before. And I think it really does give us a a very unique opportunity um, to provide recognition for those workers that their skills have always been essential. Um, to tell our story, SkillsUSA has a new SkillsUSA Champions Hub 
uh, where we've taken our magazine and actually put that online so we can share student stories of essential skills and their essential workers and what they're really doing during this time and elevate the skilled trades and we can do that on a daily basis um, so more engagement and more opportunity um, we also have an essential skills essential workers campaign right now during the summer really spotlighting the great work that our students and our instructors and our alumni are, are doing right now, um, not only to ensure that we get through this pandemic, but that we get through it stronger. And at SkillsUSA, we are training um, tomorrow's and today's future workforce. And so, so excited about that. I think it gives us an opportunity to tell our story um, so parents and students and counselors and administrators can really see the value and the difference that technical education makes, not just on that individual, but really the trajectory of an entire student's life, um, their community and the states that we serve. Um, so I really do think that we have a wonderful opportunity during this time um, to to share our story with students even at an earlier age and getting them interested. Um, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, this is one of my favorite subjects and provide them with opportunities for exploration so they can see people like you that are doing the work that you love um, and, and that it is exciting and fun and really that we value um, our skilled trades. So our parents, counselors, administrators, and actually making sure that they see the value and that students have the opportunity to take part in that at an earlier age. Big time. In fact, so you talked about a hub where everything is at. Can you tell mm -hmm. us what is that address? So it's skillsusachampions.org and that is where you can see these stories of really our students and our instructors and the great work that they're doing during this pandemic and many stories of our alumni as well. That's awesome because highlighting and like a little bit of brag on like yeah i built this i took part in this is awesome and um i cannot wait to look at more stories of success with the students but let's rewind a little bit because i am obviously um <laughs> I was told that I can't call myself a stalker, that uh, an enthusiastic ambassador <laughs> for Skills USA is the more appropriate terminology. I genuinely love the organization. I think it's great. I've geeked out about it a lot with my fan group, but I don't want to assume that everybody watching knows what Skills USA is and what it provides for the students. So could you break it down a little bit on, because there's, there's kind of, you, you provide the full package, right? Absolutely. I get that at nationals and at state competitions, but there's a lot more. So if, would you mind? Just really quickly, um, SkillsUSA has an impact on the lives of America's future workforce. We're a career and technical um, student organization and how we have the impact is through the development of our personal workplace and technical skills of our students. So talking about that, that well-rounded student that you were talking about before. Um, so our technical skills that are grounded in academics, and we do that um, by delivering our Skills USA framework and every single program and all of the curriculum and all the events that we um, that we have, we actually deliver a skill set of 17 essential elements that are demanded by employers, but actually we don't always see them in today's workforce. So we truly are um, developing tomorrow's uh, future workforce uh, for America. So um, we serve over, uh, we serve middle school, high school and college post-secondary students and um, instructors nationwide in all 50 states, two territories and in the DC area. Um, we serve over 20,000 classrooms and we impact over 365,000 members every year. So just think of the difference in skills trades and, and actually overcoming that skills gap um, that uh, Skills USA uh, can provide. Absolutely. I view Skills USA is another critical part of the pipeline. Um, Absolutely. You know, it's yeah, it varies from state to state on how students get to participate with it. I've seen some states where it is organically incorporated into the curriculum, some states where it's a, um, a, a group you're a part of maybe inside the class or outside the class. It's all over the place, which is great. There's a lot of options on how students get to participate. And so if a parent is watching right now and they want their student to have the access to um, the fundamental things that Skills USA promotes, but maybe their school doesn't have it. How can the uh, parent connect their student? 
So um, one way that the parent can connect their student, if you go to our website at skillsusa.org, you will see a listing of all 50 states and our wonderful state directors across the nation that can help you get started. Um, they can help you make that connection at, at your local campus. Um, but SkillsUSA is really intracurricular. So uh, even though there are a lot of things to do outside the classroom, we are um, ingrained in that Skills USA classroom. So the students do, um, when they come into that automotive technology classroom, they actually are receiving that is a Skills USA um, chapter, part of the Skills USA chapter. They actually receive all of that learning, those 17 essential elements that is actually built into that. And then there are a lot of other ways also um, to engage outside the classroom um, as well um, through our community service projects um, that you've seen and, and those other events um, that happen inside and out. But all the, all the, the learning and where the magic really happens is at the local level and in that local chapter and in that classroom with that SkillsUSA instructor. Um, but if they will go to skillsusa.org, we have all of our uh, state associations are listed and you can, um, you can connect with them and find out more about how to assist in getting um, a chapter started in your local community, or um, you can find out who your uh, chapter advisor may be on your campus. If you're new to an area like we are, um, new to Loudoun County and in Virginia, and uh, so uh, moving from Tennessee, so we can also find out uh, that way as well. Oh, uh, thank you for passing that information on because, again, it's it's awesome. I've seen students compete at every level, and unfortunately, you go to the you know the world skills, which is where our competitors can also go compete at an insane level. But it's outside of that. It's the fact that every time I meet these students, I meet a student who, you know, would shake my hand, make eye contact, you know, now we'll elbow bump or whatever, but they'll make eye contact and have a conversation. They have goals. They're able to express it. Little things like if you make it to nationals and want to compete, you have to have your resume. Mm -hmm. That They're being prepared to be fantastic employees. It, it's as an employer, I can't wait to work with these students because I understand so, and I look for it on resumes, you know, Skills USA is something that I know if you've participated with it, and especially if you've gone to nationals, one, you know how to work like over an eight hour day, because <laughs> those are brutal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, speaking of the pandemic and sort of how things have changed, and you know, I love the big events, which we didn't have the opportunity to participate in this year, but people got creative. Mm -hmm. How is Skills USA reaching these students now, especially now that we're going back to school? So, so exciting that we're going back to school and Skills USA is really pivoting. So at the very beginning of the pandemic, we worked with many of our partners to pivot um, what we were doing and, and making sure that we are still able to meet our mission and serve our students across the nation. Um, very proud of the work. Our Skills USA staff at the state level and also uh, at the, the national level, they've worked really hard um, to um, pivot programs and curriculum to make sure um, that we can offer um, opportunities in a virtual environment um, for our students and really engage our membership. So really focusing on that local engagement and meet, meeting people where they are because many of our students will um, go in a hybrid format. Some will be completely um, virtual, while others uh, may be on ground, depending um, on their, their state or their region in their area um, right now. So really we're focused on um, delivering opportunities and resources and tools for our state directors and our local chapters to make sure that we can reach those students. And you mentioned those, those very impressive students um, that you get to meet at uh, state and national competitions. And we have a nation full of those. Um, and, and we're also concentrating at the national level and making sure that our state and our local chapter officers, that we are preparing them to provide, uh, to provide opportunities for our students across the nation. Um, that leadership opportunity, that component that SkillsUSA provides, that they're still able to engage their membership um, with activities. And we've worked on something um, that we call an agility plan which is really to pivot all of our, our programming over 75 activities uh, for this fall um, to make sure uh, that we are connecting and motivating um, our students and our chapters um, during this time. I'm very proud of the work that our staff has done and um, very proud of the work that our students have done during this time as well. 
It's impressive to see the watching. All right. I got to give credit to the students going through this because I, you know, a lot of it stinks, right? Whatever, boo, whatever. But these kids turned around and said, okay, how can I evolve? How do I adapt? How do I make it better? And looking at how creative they are and doing things. I'm so happy you're um, really promoting the engagement because for me, again, I, I don't know if you heard my story. I found my friends the first time I went to nationals and met Skills USA folks. We spoke the same language. We were passionate about um, working with our hands, um, being involved in leadership, having all these opportunities. And I think it's important that students connect and make friends. Um, how, another big thing for me is alumni. I have been mm -hmm. passionate about like, all right, first of all, I need to go back to school so I can become an actual member. Like that's a goal. Um, but if I were an alumni, I wanna see more of them coming out and participating. So can alumni, when you talk about skillsusachampions.org, alumni, are they encouraged to share their stories? Absolutely. In fact, we'll have a new one. I think it goes up either today or tomorrow. It was very interesting. It was an email that I sent out to membership and, and alumni, actually, and one of our alumni members received it, and she is actually um, going to be sharing her story this week of being essential during this time. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to share it right now, um, but it's very exciting. So I'd encourage you to go to champions, uh, SkillsUSA, champions.org and see that. But actually of both um, our former alumni and her husband um, and how they have been uh, working in skilled trades and, and essential during this time. Um, and we've had so many stories of uh, students and chapters that have pivoted uh, what they are doing locally. Um, like in Oak Harbor uh, High School in Washington, our students who were talking about not being able to go to nationals, our students there, um, their 2020 engineering technology design uh, in that competition, they were building a 3D printer. And um, that as part of their, uh, as part of their competition, and instead they took that 3D uh, printer opportunity, built that and pivoted what they were going to be doing and, um, and developed PPE. Um, to, to actually supply for our essential healthcare workers. Um, and we've seen so many demonstrations of our, our students um, making PPE and donating PPE, tens of thousands um, across the United States. And, and that's just one, um, one way. And so many of our teachers have been very, um, uh, very creative during this time and students and trying to get projects and how do I get the hands-on learning? Um, and I've seen many projects of household plumbing and, um, and electrical and, uh, and also automotive technician uh, opportunities. I think in Somerset, New Jersey, there's a story um, about uh, a high school there um, that actually uh, all of their different areas actually had at home. Um, lessons as well for their students and, and then students that um, and now alumni um, that actually persisted um, ENT students that just finished their training but couldn't get the um, couldn't get their certification in order to work but really wanted um, and desired to be working and providing those services to their community um, that actually went well out of their way to make sure that they could get the certification and sought out uh, certification opportunities uh, so that they could work and, and serve the community during this time. So just uh, wonderful stories of students it's, and alumni. Yes, it is. And I think that it is so critical and valuable for alumni to share this message because there are a lot of myths with the industry and the industry is broad, right? You know, I say the trades, but that ain't, that's automotive, aerospace, culinary, cosmetology, blah, blah, blah you know, all of it. What, what do you see being the biggest myth um, with the industry? The biggest myth is probably parents not understanding the value of technical education and that these are good jobs. And that, that right now when a lot of people are, are not able to work or essential workers are working and have jobs and they can support a family um, and, uh, and they provide great futures. Um, yes. for our students and just the impact um, and the life change that they truly can mean, um, not only for your student, your child, um, but future generations um, as well and the importance. Um, and that these are, are great jobs in great environments as well um, for our students um, to enter into. So um, I think as, as long as we can continue telling the story and, and 
um, with SEPCA and people like you um, being true champions of skills trades. I think um, more people will understand and see um, the importance, uh, the value, and what that can really mean for their families and their future. Yes, completely agreed. Um, and I think that, oh, you speak of the teacher in New Jersey. Uh, one thing that I talk to parents is, you know, it's a great career. There's, there's a huge story arc, long term, lots of money to be made. Um, but they're also better consumers, you know, and so I use the example of I can work on cars, you know, like, cool, I put in a drive shaft, neat. Uh, I'm not an expert by any means. When I now take my car to the mechanic to go have very specific work done, I'm smart enough to know if they're taking my money, right? You know, these, these things that are so valuable. And I think the teacher in New Jersey might have really opened up some eyes by parents saying, you know, like, this is what it looks like to change your light switch, you know, or the things around your hand. This is how a toilet works. It's not magic, you know, it's pretty simple, actually. But that's fantastic. And I think that Skills USA is going to do an amazing job to uh, highlight more of these stories. We're essential workers, yes. there's great careers, there's lots of job openings. Oh my gosh, so many yes. opportunities all over the place. Um, so <laughs> I get to talk to you. This has been so much yes. fun, Shelly. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, and oh, real quick, hey, I just wanna give a shout out. We do have some fans on and there is a, a bit of a delay <laughs> so I can't quite see the feed, but hello, Katie. George and I uh, say hello. <laughs> yes. You are delayed. I yes. could, but I think Katie George is on. Hi, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hi, friends. Oh, we can, it's like virtual nationals. You know, we all get to hang out. And um, I, it, I think that it's fantastic. I would love to see more alumni and also students sharing their stories of what they are building and up to because they're amazing. And again, it is putting on repeat of all the good things that there are great opportunities and for what skills USA provides students. Oh, well, I think all students should have the opportunity. Like I'm sad that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't say stuff too. And hang on, I am, oh, Peter Carey too. Hello, we got, hello everybody. Uh, I, yeah. This is, it's like mini nationals. We'll just pretend that way. Um, Shelly, thank you again so much for taking the time to join us. And can, can I ask like hard hitting questions? Like, do you know how, how national and state competitions will look next year? So we're preparing. Um, we will have uh, competitions this year. Um, and we are preparing um, to provide resources in order to pivot um, those competitions if necessary. Um, okay. I think in some areas, we already know what that's going to look like. Um, and based on uh, their, their State Department of Education and some decisions that have already made and uh, have already been made and others, we are preparing them for what that future looks like, um, given their scenario a little later this fall. Um, so, but we are preparing resources um, so that we'll be uh, ready to provide opportunities um, for our students for those competitions for recognition. Um, it's such a great opportunity for students to really not only share their skills, but really um, to provide scholarship opportunities and for those future um, education opportunities and that future career in career and technical education that you've spoken about. So thank you so much. I think there's never been a better time um, to be skilled in America. So I'm uh, so never. excited to be here. I have one more question actually from a counselor. Um, how does Skills USA educate the school on their program? Um, is that, would she still go to skillsusa.org, look for the state director and contact through them? And then there's a website um, there as well. Okay. If you don't have a chapter um, in, your, in, in your state, you can find your state director there. Um, each one, it has their individual contact information as well as the web, their website. And you can find resources, just find out more information about what the, uh, what the calendar looks like for, for your state and your school year. Um, or you can contact them directly through email, phone, or uh, through their websites. Awesome. And I'm going to ask you politely to repeat both websites again for, uh, to just put it on repeat again. So if you just go to skillsusa.org, you can also find um, links to our stories there. So skillsusa.org is our primary website. Skillsusachampions.org is a direct um, website to our digital hub where you can find out amazing stories of our students, instructors, and alumni across the nation and the essential work that they're doing 
now. So awesome. thank you. And I did, I also saw that if folks wanted to ask you questions, they can directly. Oh, absolutely. Was that awesome. Cause I thought I saw somewhere like, oh, Ashley Trevor's questions. Yes, so, there's an um, Ask Shelly column. So if you have a question that you would like to ask Shelly, um, okay. uh, you can ask me those hard questions and, and I will <laughs> respond as well. I love it so much. Well, Shelly, thank you again for taking the time. This has been beyond fantastic. This temporarily satiated my need to see all my Skills USA friends, uh, which will, you know, I'll need to see them again very soon anyway. But thank you for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much, Kayleen, for having me and you too. It's been great. Can't wait until we actually can be together in person, but we'll have to do this again sometime. Agreed. Yes, definitely agreed. And so uh, to all of our fans, thank you so much for tuning in. We will be off next week. Join us again on August 18th, where we'll be talking about women in the trades. Obviously, I'm going to geek out about that too. So I look forward to you joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to text a career path to a number that I, <laughs> that I lost my piece of paper. I uh, will put it in the notes, but then you can also uh, put them uh, in the comments. So everyone have a great rest of your week and we'll see you uh, on August 18th. Bye-bye.